Let me go straight to the story I had promised you earlier. And popular police officer Titus Musila Alias Katitu, who shot dead a man during an operation in Gidurai 45 in 2013, has been jailed for 15 years. High Court Judge James Wakiaga found Titus Ngamau Musila Alias Katitu guilty of murdering Kenneth Kimani Mwangi on April 14th, 2013, at the Gidurai 45 bastage. His lawyer, Cliff Obeta, had asked the judge to acquit the police constable as, quote-unquote, no evidence has been adduced to prove he is the one who had shot dead uh, Kenneth. Demonstrators blocked Thicker Road for several days, alleging the Katitu had been framed, yet he was the one who had helped reduce crime in Gidurai, where victims were being robbed in broad daylight. Now, we're going to run his story shortly, but for now, let me link up with our reporter, Brian Obuya, who has been following this story very closely for us. Brian, good afternoon. This man who has already been in custody for the last four years. Now, while issuing that uh, ruling today, did the judge consider the four years that uh, this cop has already spent behind bars? Good afternoon, Yusuf. And not only that, Tyson uh, Ngamau's uh, uh, imprisonment could even be lesser given that he has spent four years uh, in, in custody, in police custody, and also uh, he has also been given another three years, which will be on, uh, on probation. But then the 12 years Justice Wakiaga was very specific, was going to serve as a warning to police officers who have been operating outside uh, the law. Now, giving that judgment, again, Justice James Wakiaga maintained that uh, this trial use of was not about the popularity of Katitu, given that he is a man whose arrest in, in, uh, in 2014 sparked protests, running battles all over Gidurai 45, uh, with locals demanding that he be released, saying that he is a man who has been uh, fighting crime in that area and that his absence will, uh, will, will ensure, or rather will, will, will see that crime increases in Gidurai. Uh, he says that uh, the trial has not been about the popularity of Katitu. This trial has not been uh, about uh, uh, the other police officers who were arrested together with Katitu, but this trial specifically was about uh, the unlawful use of uh, a firearm. You want to remember also, uh, Yusuf, that uh, the arrest, or rather the killing of um, of uh, Kenneth Mwangi happened uh, a year before the killing of his brother uh, uh, Mwangi also. Now, this is what uh, the, the, judge, the, the judge observed, especially in the February, in the previous uh, uh, ruling when Justice Wakiaga maintained uh, that uh, given that uh, police officer Titus Ngamau had actually warned uh, the, had actually warned Kenneth's brother before his murder shows that this was a crime that was a forethought. Uh, therefore, uh, it, 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 it was also clear that he might have had intentions of eliminating the brother. It is also important that we remember, Yusuf, that the murder of Kenneth's brother was coming just days when he had been set to appear as a witness in this ruling that has, in this judgment that has actually spun the last five years. So we therefore hope that this ruling, this judgment that we'll see uh, Titus Ngamau, alias Katitu, spent 15 years in, in prison, could also be, could actually be an end to a five-year court battle between a, pol a, a law enforcement officer, a community trying to run away from a marauding crime, and uh, and uh, the, the the fight for justice, uh, the fight for justice for Kenneth's family. Many people have actually believed since then that uh, the protests that were the protests that were actually seen in 2014 in uh, in in Gidurai were actually uh, probably staged. People trying to argue that this was uh, an act of police officers trying to cover up their own, and even Justice Wakiaga claiming that there had been uh, some sort of cover up of this murder, given that uh, even the bullet that was uh, produced in court as evidence did not match the one that uh, of the the gun that was the firearm that was issued uh, to.
to Katitu. But then uh, our crime and investigations editor, Dennis Onsarigo, had actually covered part of this Katitu story that has been eliciting emotions uh, across the country, but especially in uh, Githurai. And uh, it's important that we just get to get a look at part of that Katitu the Slayer that played on Cast Files. outside the law and execute a suspect, the people would regard that as good riddance without knowing that they're actually putting themselves in danger by encouraging the police to operate outside the law. Princess Katitu, the accused person, returned his firearm with three bullets missing. I still believe that uh, those protests were sponsored, were stage managed. They were not genuine. I still do believe that. This, this was a civilian, a boy or rather a young man who was out there and he was shot. Cases involving police impunity always face that challenge of police trying to protect their own. That is a standard rule within the police service. For the family to have closure, they were not able to testify because now they had already um, gone to Norway. Writers Musila Elias Katitu made headline news five years ago after residents of Gidurai 45 took to the streets in his defense. The policeman had gunned down an innocent man whom he claimed was a gangster. Who was this man? The first segment of Case Files, Katitu the Slayer, starts now. This is a story of a law enforcement officer, a desperate community running away from runaway crime, and a family's quest for justice. Having worked for 16 years as a police officer, Titus Musila Elias Katitu was not your ordinary kind of policeman. The man was feared among the youth and the criminal underworld, but was a darling of a community at the mercy of marauding gangs. 2013, Gedrai 45. Katitu was attached to Kasarani Police Station and a police squad codenamed Spiv, a popular crack unit. Spiv was efficient in keeping the teeming population of Gedrai safe, but had also transformed itself into a notorious police squad. Tito, manned the Matatu terminals, was known to virtually every unemployed youth manning the Matatu station. Among those he knew very well were three brothers, Walter Wamai Mwangi, Kenneth Mwangi, and Oscar Mushoki Mwangi. These three brothers are since no more, but the elimination revolves around a man wanted by the law, but praised by community. I'm <laughs> Amekuwa tu akiangaikana na wakora hapa, Githurai, Eastside ya 45. Wizi 
ilikuwa imeisha kabisa na tangu siku hata kuna nyumba mbili hapa zimeibiwa tu juzi juzi tu kwa hivyo yeye ni mkubwa wa hii area watu wanampenda sana kwa sababu ya kujitolea kwake kwa kazi yake mzuri for a straight one week a little known katitu was thrust into the limelight thousands of githrai residents are taken to the streets to protest the arrest of the police officer Katitu was arrested in connection with the cold blood killing of Kenneth Mwangi or Kim. Not even a week long protest and the death of one protester who stopped the unrelenting pressure from the residents. At the time, Mike Sonko was the Nairobi senator. Askari kama alikuwa na uwa waizi, uwa anafanya kazi mzuri. Katitu had drawn support from the most unlikely quarters. The political class had come to his defense, claiming the father of four had done a stellar job, gunning down notorious criminals and keeping the city safe. Caving in to public pressure, the National Police Service weighed in. But residents of Gidurai 45 will hear none of it. Close to one year.